Welcome back. Now, in this session, we'll learn in the discrete time frequency response of a discrete time system. We've already done this in unit, unit first, but let me repeat it. We know the discrete time system. We know the response of a discrete time system whose input is x of n, whose input is x of n, and impulse response is h of n, the output response is y of n, is given by convolution of x of n with h of n. So it's the response of the system, and we can write y of n like this summation k running from minus infinity to infinity x of n h of n minus k odd we can also write it like this summation k running from minus infinity to infinity h of k h of n minus k this is part of the commutative property of convolution is then reacted. Now, what do you mean by frequency response? Frequency response simply means when x of n is equal to e to the power of g omega n. Or if you say real sine waves, when the input is sine omega n or cos omega. We talk about real sine. So when the input, in short, when the input to the system is a sinusoid, the output is referred as the frequency response of the system. So the output is referred as the frequency response of this system. So uh, how do we write this? So you know if substitute x of n equal to e to the power, let's so substitute this as input now then we take this is from minus to k. Let's use this one. This is h of k e to the power of j omega and instead of n we have n minus k. So we can write it like this minus infinity infinity h of k e to the power of j omega m minus e to the power of j omega k. Now, this summation is independent of m, so we can take e to the power of minus j omega m outside. So this is the output of the system when the input is. So when the input is, sorry, I think this is, no, I don't try to run. When the input is, I think it is j omega. Sorry, it should be plus here. Plus here minus here. I don't know. This is plus. So this is minus here because it is actually n minus k. So our input is j omega. So it will be e to the power of j. Please pay attention. So we have n is e to the power of j omega n summation. K e to the power of minus omega k minus infinity. What is uh, this? Now this is saying the output is the input multiplied by this summation. Let's say this is h of omega. Now we know that the Fourier transform in the in fact the discrete term Fourier transform of x of m is e to the power of summation x of m e to the power of minus g omega. Now here, this is h of k. If h of k is a signal, so the only difference between this summation and this summation is we have replaced n by k. So what is this? This is the discrete time Fourier transform of what? h of k or h of n. This is the discrete time Fourier transform. So when the input is a sinusoid, Output is the same sinusoid multiplied by the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response. This is very, very important result. So the output is input multiplied by discrete time Fourier transform of H of K or H of M means the discrete time Fourier transform of impulse response of the system. This is very, very important. And this is called the eigen behavior of the system. This is referred as the eigen behavior of system or eigen property of this from sinusoids. This is referred as the eigen property of the system. And H of omega is the discrete time Fourier transform of 
h of k or h of n. Then this is k or n is a dummy variable, so it doesn't matter. So h of k is the p prime Fourier transform. So we can also write this. And when it's on minus infinity, h of n e to the power of minus g n n. Right? So this is uh, the frequency response of the system. This is frequency response of the system. Frequency response of the system is simply, and this h of omega is recorded as the frequency response. Frequency response of the system. H of omega is recorded as actually the frequency response of the system. And this gives us the frequency behavior of the system actually. So H of omega is H of omega is summation n running from minus infinity to infinity H of n e to the power of n g over n and we know this is a complex quantity this will be a complex quantity we can express it as h of omega plus g times h minus imaginary n real component and magnitude of this we can have magnitude of this and we can have the series component of this how you want to express it either in rectangle components or polar coordinates Right. So in short, when the input to the system is sinusoid output is the same sinusoid multiplied by the multiplied by the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response of the system. And that discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response of the system is referred as the frequency response of the system. This is very, very important. Now let me solve an example for this. Let's suppose the output, the input output of a system is related by this. This is referred as the moon averaging filter actually. This is referred as moon averaging filter. And our goal is to determine the frequency response of this discrete time system. So our goal is to determine the frequency response of this system. So to determine the frequency response, what should we have? We should have H of M. But how do we determine the h of n here? This is very, very important example, very, very important. Now, what do we mean the impulse response of the system? When the input to the system is means when x of n is delta n. So replace x of n by delta n. So we'll have y of n is delta n plus delta n minus one for this quantity plus delta n minus two. Whole divided by so we know this is non zero at n equal to zero, this is non zero at n equal to one, this is non zero at n equal to number two. So you can say you can write it in the sequence form like this, and we have one by three. This is one, this is one, and this is one. So this is referred as h of this is referred as h of so h of n is this. So we have to mind h of n. Now let me repeat it. Now, impulse response of the system means simply when the input to the system is delta n. So, replace wherever you have x of n, replace there by delta n. So, replacing x of n by delta n, same way x of n minus 1 will be replaced by delta n minus 1. Same way delta n minus 2 will be replaced, so x of n minus 2 will be replaced by delta n minus 2. And we know this is non zero at n equal to 0, this is non zero at n equal to 1, this is non zero at n equal to 2. So, you can have that impulse response like this and there is one by three quantity here. So impulse response is this. So this is the impulse response. Now we can determine that. So the impulse response, you can also plot it now. We can plot the impulse response. So the impulse response of the system looks like this. This is 1 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 3. And the rest of the samples are 0. So the rest of the samples are 0. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, and 4. So this is h of n. Now the impulse response of the system, sorry, frequency response of the system is h of omega, the Fourier transform of this becomes Fourier transform of h of k e to the power of minus g omega k. I'm deliberately using k and n. Yeah, so we can also write it minus k. Now what is the difference between 
this one and this one. The only difference is the uh, independent variable. Means in this summation, we have used k as the independent variable. In this summation, we have used n. Please don't be confused. We can interchange it because k are n are dummy variables. So we know h of n is only non zero from zero to two. The rest of the samples are zero. So we can replace from zero to uh, two. H of n e to the power of n is written here at n, and this will be equal to h of n is 1 by 3, so put n equal to 0, this will be e to the power of 0, 1 e to the power of minus g omega into 1, h of 2 e to the power of minus g omega 2, so this will be equal to this h of 0 is 1 by 3, this will be 1, 1 by 3 plus e to the power of minus g, and this is 2, right? I hope I'm doing it right, and there is only 3 also. So we can write it as 1 by 3, e to the power of g omega, minus g omega, plus e to the power of minus 2 g omega, plus 1, I'm writing this term as last. So taking e to the power of minus g omega common, e to the power of minus g omega common, and this will be e to the power of, so this will be 1. So this is simply 1, this is 1 plus e to the power of minus g omega plus e to the power of g omega. So when we take inside this, this will be done. And now what are we going to do? We are going to multiply this by 2 and divide it by 2. So this will be 1 by 3 e to the power of minus g omega. 1 plus twice, this is cos of omega. So the frequency that comes of this system is 1 by 3 e to the power of minus g omega. 1 plus 2 cos. So this is the frequency that comes of this system. Please plot it in the MATLAB. See how will it behave? Will it behave actually in the loop and center? Please check the frequency of my plot. This expression is magnitude. You see the magnitude of phase one. All right, let me end this session here. In the next session, we shall learn about the properties of this feedback period. Thank you.